to your device utopia. Hello everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We're going to be showing you how to properly execute Commodore 64 emulation here on the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. We're going to start from scratch. Uh, you'll need a few things to get started, but uh, we're going to take you through those as well. The first thing you need to do, of course, is to install the emulator. This is not free. Commodore 64 emulator. All right, just so happens I already own it. And we're going to install it. Now we do need some support files for this to actually run, of course, and we need some games. So we're going to go ahead and do both. Open up a browser on your PC and go to this website. It's part of NVIDIA Shield Zone, so it's perfectly safe. Uh, you can also go to NVIDIA Shield Zone and in the search box, type in C64 and you'll be able to get to this page as well. There's two packs. You'll need the Essentials Game Pack or the Essentials Pack with no games. We're going to go ahead and grab some with some games. And I've already downloaded it once, but we'll just overwrite that one. All right. That's all we need from the browser for now. Next up, you're going to need some sort of a file manager to actually access those files. So I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to use my favorite, which is Explorer. And uh, this is a free download. Um, I'll take you through a quick configuration here. So essentially this is a standard two window file manager considering there's source on one side and destination on the other, whichever one you're on at the time is the source, right? So uh, in order to get the files over there, you could use some other means. You could hook up a Wi-Fi or hook up a USB cable or whatever. But here we have something called Wi-Fi uh, file sharing. If you don't see it in your Explorer, go into show and make sure it's check marked here and enable the Wi-Fi service. Oops, I already had it running, I guess. So we'll hit start. All right, so now we'll go back to our browser. We'll go to the URL listed there. Hey, and there is our Android file system. There's the download folder, which is exactly what we're looking for. All right, and the game pack uploads, and there it is. All right, so we're pretty much done here. Let's go ahead and get rid of our browser window. All right, so if you go to your downloads folder, and there's the game pack. Now, uh, Explorer handles zip files pretty easy. You can just click on it, and it'll expand open and show you what's inside. What we need is what's inside to go right on the root. Don't look at root, just look at your internal storage, right on the root of the SD card, so to speak. We're gonna long press A, hit copy, and the files that we need, plus a bunch of games, are going to copy over there right now. Perfect. There's C64MU. All right, now we're ready to actually go into the emulator and do some key configurations and some setup. We'll go ahead and allow it to access stuff on the device. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to disable a few of the built-in commands, such as speeding up. Uh, we need all the buttons on the on the joy controller, the joystick controller, to... Um, configured a keyboard commands. Now the Commodore 64 is a computer. It's not a console, so we will need some keyboard commands. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into GUI and let's see. Oh, wrong spot. System. Uh, let's see. Just a minute here. So we're going to want to go in here and uh, change and configure uh, this uh, application to allow us to have a lot of keyboard input to be assigned to buttons. That's important because the Commodore 64, it is a computer and it does require a lot of key presses on some games to get them to work properly. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go into the NVIDIA controller. We're gonna to go to set in game actions. 
we're going to get rid of fast forward by quickly tapping left twice and uh, I think that's all we need to do in here set joystick keys we're gonna remove trigger turbo from B and swapping joystick ports from Y all right we need those we need those buttons that's why we're doing that now we're gonna go to set keyboard keys now the main key you're gonna need is the space bar so we're gonna go ahead and go to space bar and we're gonna assign it to the left bumper we also need run stop which is popular with the crack screens run stop we're gonna assign that to the right bumper we also need yes and no to handle um, the yes and no prompts do you want unlimited lives yes or no so we're going to assign n to the r3 or the thumb trigger or the thumb uh, press on the analog controller then we're going to go up to y I guess you know we're going to assign that to the left thumb controller and we're going to insert we're going to go ahead and do the function keys as x for f1 y for f3 we're going to skip f5 typically you need one and f7 we'll leave three on there and then we'll do seven as b all right so we're in pretty good shape here let's go ahead and un take our uh, f5 off of there toggle keyboard is star that's fine let's make sure there's nothing else that's going to interfere with our experience run stop is good I thought all right excellent so great so we've disabled the built-in keystrokes or the built-in button controls and we have enabled keyboard actions for our buttons excellent all right so now we're ready to actually load some games go to load games go to the c64 mu folder that we created go to discs and let's see so I've, I've put them all in alphabet uh, alphabetical folders so if you want to play whiz ball or whatever look under w bag it man all the good stuff should be here the stuff that most people like to play just a little sample of what's available all right so uh, let's find something we can play here i don't know let's say uh space pilot's good doesn't auto load auto run all right so this is a perfect example of a crack screen that we need to get by sometimes the fire button will do the trick in this case it does all right so here we go f1 f3 f5 right but we can go ahead and keep all of those now this says we need enter to continue sometimes the fire button will do the trick which it does not so in this case we're going to have to assign something to be the enter key so let's go back we're going to say we don't really want to exit this will get us back to this screen we're going to go back to our assignments inside of here set keyboard and let's go find the return button restore return we're going to go ahead and set that to the left trigger button perfect now we're back to our game left trigger perfect see here's why we wanted f1 um, so player one start we could do joystick or f1 great and new start is run stop see told you we need run stop too so let's go ahead and give it a whirl here f1 all right perfect all right there we go we got it everything looks great And of course back on the uh, get back on the button really quit no and then we're going to jump ourselves up now this does automatic save state so you can go back in there and play that again at your leisure let's go to something that's a little more um familiar everyone's played archon oh, i already have a save state there so we'll just restart Here's an example where you're going to need run stop. No, nope, maybe not in this one. 
All right, there's the famous Electronic Arts logo, the loader. You know, I wish I knew from a trivia standpoint why they started with the third from the top when they changed the colors instead of just starting from the top and going to the bottom. Just to be different, I suppose. Worthless trivia. In the early days, a lot of people thought that this stood for EOA, and nobody knew what the O was. E was obviously electronic, and A was for arts, but what does the O mean? These are actually supposed to just be primitive shapes, a, a, a cube, a circle, and a pyramid. So there's your worthless uh, information for the day. Now, we reassigned or we disabled the fast forward button. We could always go back and put fast forward back on the trigger. Um, that would help us get through some of these long loaders and intros. But since we turned it off, we can't use it. And one of the common things you're going to get are games that will not load with the fast loading uh, built into it. Now currently, the uh, C64 MU app will do everything possible to speed up the load times and move you through the intros as quickly as possible. Now in a game such as Archon here, it looks like we're kind of in a boot loop and it's not working. This could be because some game loaders don't like the fast loading process, right? So if we wanted to, we could probably just restart this. But I'm going to show you how to turn off that turbo disk routine so we can actually get into the game. We'll confirm one more time as it restarts here that we've got a boot loop going on here. All right, we're going to hit back. No. And we are going to want to go into, I believe, is option system. And let's see. True drive emulation is what you're looking for. We're going to turn that on. Most of the time, 99.999% of the time, you're going to want to keep that turned on. Or I'm sorry, off. You do not want true drive emulation because it's very, very slow. But in this case, we're going to need it. So let's reset. We'll do a hard reset. Oh, I guess we're going to have to go back and reload the game. recent games we can use Archon restart you can tell the experience is considerably different here with these slower load times but hey some of these games you just have to use the true drive emulation to get them to work now understand too that for every game there's probably three or four different crowds or releases um, you may find one that's actually more suitable for emulation All right, so this looks familiar. Now, hopefully this time around, there will not be a problem. In this case, we just need to push the button. There you go. Um, so, border in the arena is always dark. I'm going to say no. Unlimited energy, no. Unlimited spells, no. Now we have our So was true drive emulation the problem on that last one? Nope, you just had to push the fire button. Weird stuff like that happens all the time. Here we go, hit the run key to continue. I don't know why they did that, but they did. guys come out the cast of characters sets the stage all right now you'll notice for some reason that we have no control this means our joystick is in the wrong port easy enough to fix just jump over here swap joystick ports to on and we should be good to go. Oh, wait a minute. I see. Once again, we have buttons to push. F3, we're going to say the computer's dark. Light goes first and press F7. And since I changed the joystick, it's broken now. Swap back off. There we go.
cast a spell. Prison. We don't want this shapeshifter going anywhere. So he's in prison now. He can't move anywhere. All right. Elemental versus Phoenix. This is a very, very bad setup right here. I'm so screwed. Dead. All right. Enough of that. We can sit here and play Archon all day. Let's find another game. Uh, let's see. Uh, about Dino Eggs. I'm pretty sure Dino Eggs has some trainer stuff at the beginning, too. Oh, hey, let's go back and turn off that drive emulation again, shall we? It uh, definitely slows things down. System. And drive emulation off. And let's go ahead and we'll load the game up again. Oops. Let's go to recent games. Dino Eggs. Restart. Yeah, a little bit faster, you think? See, here you go, space to read or run stop to start. So you can sit here and space your way through to get all the information, or you could hit run stop to move on. Remember, we put those on the left and right bumper. No unlimited lives, no biological clock. Let's turn off, let's not turn off the collisions. Let's actually play fair. All right, one of my favorite games from the 8 bit era. Make sure. Oh, the joystick works correctly. This, I think, is one that swaps the keyboard, but I don't remember for sure. Now, this one's, like, all backwards, so let's back up. Let's swap ports to on. There we go. Now he's working the way he's supposed to. Save some Dino eggs here. safe as long as I'm in there. Oh, Dino Mom's coming. I better get a fire going. I'm going to get stomped. No! Nope. Alright, well, sucks to be me. Alright. Alright, so there's a, uh, a whole bunch of other options in here we could dig through all day long. Um, suffice to say, that'll get you going. That'll get things started. Um, of course, like I said, there's plenty of games on here. You can add your own. Just get the D64 files and throw them in here into one of these folders, and uh, you'll be just fine. Yes, He-Man the movie. Terrible. All right, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the... Uh, hope you enjoyed this look at the Commodore 64 emulator, and hopefully you've got it all running happy. A little bit of struggle there at times, but overall, pretty simple once you get it set up. You can just sit and enjoy playing Commodore 64 on the big screen right here on your NVIDIA Shield TV. This is Shane Armand Monroe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We'll see you next time.